Hello! At this point in our series, we've argued that the Corinthians would have been both willing and able to check out Paul's claims that there were 500 witnesses to the risen Jesus. Now, we'll pull the threads of this cumulative case together in arguing that there really were such witnesses. When Paul, or anyone for that matter, makes a claim, there are three possibilities. First, they are lying and trying to deceive their audience. If they're not trying to deceive their audience, then they are either honestly mistaken about their claim, or their claim is correct. So, to argue that there really were those 500 eyewitnesses, we need to argue that Paul didn't lie, nor did he make a mistake. We could actually do this multiple ways. The most obvious is that since the Corinthians were willing and able to check out Paul's claims, then they would have found out Paul's mistakes or lies if there were any. But that didn't happen, so there aren't any. It's not listed in any of his points, but Andrew has another unspoken assertion, slash assumption, slash inference, that the subset of a subset of a subset of a subset of people who accepted the invitation to undertake an investigation of the 500 were successful in their mission to find them. Of course, we have no sources of any kind reporting such a success, inside or outside of the church, so we are further and further down the speculation line. But an apologist like Andrew might protest that anyone whose investigation of the 500 came up wanting would leave the church and stop believing. And I say yes, I agree. Who is to say that exactly that didn't happen? If the church at Corinth was around 50 people at the time, if we split these competing and compounding inferences at each step, we're left with maybe three people who've gotten this far to be actively investigating. Even if it's 10 or 20, would the early church do some kind of exit interview and record the failed interviews and then keep copying this record of shame for generations? No, not at all. Ah, so Apologia worries that even if the early Corinthians managed to find out that Paul was lying or mistaken, we would have no record of that today. Now, it may be true that we would have no written record of a failed investigation, as in someone writing, I, a first century Christian Corinthian, never found any of those eyewitnesses Paul was talking about, but that hardly damages Loke's case. See, what's really important to note is that Paul had people in Corinth who were questioning whether his authority was actually legitimate. In such a circumstance, finding out that Paul had deceived them would have been devastating to his reputation. The Corinthian Christians would have discredited Paul and warned their relatives and friends about Paul's harmful hoax, which tells people to risk their lives for a faith that was based on the ridiculous belief of bodily resurrection, supported by a false list of eyewitnesses. However, instead of that, Paul's letters were copied from generation to generation and treated as divinely inspired. So we have good evidence that there was no such failed investigation. As Peter Kreeft succinctly observes, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 6 that most of the 500 are still alive, inviting any reader to check the truth of the story by questioning the eyewitnesses. He could never have done this and gotten away with it, given the power, resource, and numbers of his enemies, if it were not true. To summarize this argument, 1. If an investigation had found that Paul was lying or mistaken, then he would have been discredited. 2. Paul was not discredited. 3. Therefore, no investigation found that Paul was lying or mistaken. However, there are more arguments to consider here. See, Paul knew that his authority was being scrutinized, and that the Corinthians were both willing and able to fact-check him. In the face of this, Paul cited the 500 witnesses as evidence of Christ's resurrection, invited the Corinthians to check out this claim, and then proceeded to argue that if Christ had not been raised, then their lives are all completely terrible. If Paul was lying, he must have been quite an idiot for inviting such a swift death to any shred of credibility that he may have had. In fact, since falsifying Paul's claims would have been so damaging, I dare say he wouldn't have even shared this story about the 500 witnesses unless he knew it was true and had evidence that he was not mistaken. So we could formalize these arguments as well. So, the ability and willingness of the Corinthians to check out Paul's claims along with the challenges to his authority evidence the legitimacy of Paul's claims on multiple levels. That's pretty cool. The historical considerations we've looked at in the last three videos of this series culminate in these arguments. However, there are even more factors that build up Loke's case beyond what's already been covered, and we'll start looking at those in the next video. But that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy this content.